island of Maui. I'm here with Ed and Michelle, and they um, have been gracious enough to allow me to come onto their property and to show you the world what's going on here at the devastation of their what used to be their beautiful home. They've uh, they owned it for about seven years. It is a complete and total loss, and they are going to go through. Um, an update, if you will, of what they've experienced since the fire in terms of support from the various governmental agencies, from their insurance companies, because we believe it's very important for you, the um, concerned citizen of the world, to know what's actually going on here in Lahaina. So this is not something you're going to see in the mainstream media probably, but I think it's very important because we need to bring awareness to the struggle that the people of Lahaina are actually going through. And more than anything, we got to get the word out because if the word gets out, then there can be possible justice or there can be people that come to the aid of the people of Lahaina. So please do me a favor, do Lahaina a favor, do the Cheneys a favor, um, share the video, subscribe to the channel. It's been shadow banned. And, uh, and we're going to not just talk about what they've experienced, but we're also going to show you around their land, what's left of their belongings and show you some really interesting, weird, crazy things that I don't know if anyone's actually gone on a property and done this before, but we want to sh shine a light on, on what's happened here. Um, so anyway, with, uh, with much love and respect and aloha to all the fire survivors, we're doing this also as a community service because the story that you're about to hear Ed and Michelle tell is the same story that I'm hearing from basically everybody that I've talked to as well, and it's, it's not really that pretty what they're going through. So. Um, Ed was one of the first people on the channel and his video got taken down and with that also the opportunity to give to Ed and his family so that kind of sucks because it had almost a million views um, but we're going to put his Venmo link and their GoFundMe in the description of this video so if you choose to help them obviously they would uh, you know they don't, they're not asking for help but I asked them for that Venmo information and anything you can give, even if it's just five bucks, right? If everyone that watches this video gives one dollar, they could probably rebuild their house. So I'm always shooting for 100% audience participation. <laughs> that, you know, if everyone just gave a buck, I'm telling you, it would change the world. So anyway, without any further ado, Ed and Michelle, thank you so much for, for joining me out here. And uh, I just wanna say I'm so sorry for what you've been through and condolences for your friends that you've lost and, and people that you've known in the community. And just to come out here and do this video I know is hard. It's heart-wrenching, it's emotionally tiring. You're already emotionally tired. You haven't been off the island in how many years, Ed? <laughs> Eight, nine years. Eight, nine years. So I've been here for 40. One of these things that these people need, and a lot of these people need, is a vacation. They need to leave Maui and just go take some time off. And, but unfortunately, you know, Ed's an independent businessman, and uh, you also own your own business. So they're entrepreneurs. They don't have any kind of unemployment coming or anything like no. that. So not having the same amount of clients because most of your clients are house burn. If you remember, Ed was a, is a handyman yep. and a man of all, you know, <laughs> many yep. skills, can do just about anything. And you, Michelle, had a property management company, I believe, or a, like a... Yeah, uh, take care of... Take, concierge. Take, concierge, yeah. Concierge, concierge, yeah. So, whatever they need. Kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. So if you need a good handyman, if you need a good concierge for your home on Maui, they're here ready to serve. Mm -hmm. They're working hard every single day. I witness it myself. Probably the most hardest working people I've come across in my life. So with that, Ed, tell us a little bit, and Michelle, tell us a little bit about the support that you've received since the fire in terms of, and let's just get right down to the numbers. You know, uh, how much money have you received as homeowners, right? These are not they're not renters, so that you didn't qualify for the normal stuff because nope. the default answer from FEMA and Red Cross is if you have insurance, what do they tell you? They say we can't help you until everybody else has been exhausted, but most of them have the same response. Uh, we can't do much for you because you have insurance. So go to your insurance company. Right. Yep. That's the answer. Okay, now are you willing to tell us who your insurance company is? Geico. Geico. All no, right. It's That's a pretty good name. R and R L I. Yeah, R L I. Subsidiary of Geico. But if you sign up with Geico Home Insurance, they're going to basically put you in touch with this other company that handles their home insurance, yep. right? Which is yep. called R L I. R L I. Okay. And what's been your experience so far with R L I, and uh, what kind of monies have you received to date? Well, it's been a little difficult um, in the beginning. You know, the process of not knowing exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, we're not insurance people. Right. Um, so that was a learning curve as well. We've well, never and done this before, no, obviously. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, they, they'll give you little bits at a time and um, we're still working on our prop personal property. We have to list everything that mm. we owned uh, on this personal property list. So have you received any money yet? On that, he gave us um, a little bit of, you know, like 25 for it, but um, he gave so us you, a little bit of money for that. So in you the received very some money for your personal possessions that you lost? Yeah, but it's not anywhere near the policy. Not anywhere no, close. No. And so we have to do a detailed list of that, which is very time consuming, just trying to remember what you had, Yeah. you know, and then just trying to remember when you bought it, how much you paid for it. So you have to provide receipts or, or some kind well, of itemized list? Yeah, yeah. some okay. kind of itemized list, but... Um, what about rental assistance? I know that... we got no rental. No um, rental money at all? No, we were actually... Not a penny? No. So this is 90 days after the fire? Yep. And you have not received any money yet for rental assistance. And the reason for that was a customer gave us a place to stay temporarily. And out one, of the kindness of their heart. Out of the yeah. kindness of their heart. So you have so a roof once, over your head and once chickens. Once we accept, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we had animals and we couldn't if, just... If you remember, Ed's the guy that saved his chickens. 30 <laughs> chickens. They lived in the three van. Dogs. With, three and dogs. Three dogs. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Good for you. And we've since Unfortunately, lost, lost one of our one little ones. Dogs. Little dogs. We don't know what happened yeah. to her. Um, so once you accept a free place to stay, even temporary, nobody can help you. They, they cut off services to you. Yeah. Once you take... Um, right. Well, we're, with Red Cross, we, um, they did actually give us some financial funds. Um, but then right after that, they, they closed the case and said, because you don't need... And I called them twice and I said, I want to make sure because what if like three months from now we need housing and we, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, apparently they're extending out 18 months on some of this. And I said, what do we do? And they said, well, if you have housing now, you can't apply for that. Mm. So we're so because, still kind of concerned about that. Because somebody helped you and yep. provided a place to live, yeah. then you missed out on the normal yep. benefits. Right. And even your insurance company has been unwilling to yep. forward you any money, even though you're obviously living in someone's home. Right. Yep. What about um, any of the big, obviously uh, Ed and Michelle received some monies from the Lahaina Fire Fund. There's lots of other funds out there, right? You got the Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, I believe you applied for that. Is that what you told me? Yeah. Any funds coming in from the Oprah Winfrey Fund? We did actually get um, a payment on that. One payment? One payment, yeah. And that's it? Um, I believe so. Yeah. Everyone that I've talked to, by the way, that applied for that received one payment and there was a promise of continuing payments, but yeah. no one said they received any more after that. Yeah. And then you've got the conundrum of your insurance and the coverage and rebuilding of your home. Now, by the way, this property was just sprayed. We're going to show you it has the new soil tech. Soil tech. Um, in terms of the coverage, I know you just met with the SBA and give us a little rundown because I think this is, if people talk about a potential land grab in Lahaina. I believe the land grab consists of what you're about to hear, which is people that have mortgage payments yep. that are still due, right? Yep and they can't live in their home, and then ultimately having a shortfall of coverage, and then having another loan coming in from the SBA, yep. and that payment starts, so now you have two payments, and not enough to cover the cost of replacing yeah, still all the buildings you have here. So just give us a quick rundown of what that's looked like so far. Okay. So, um, I'm trying to get my train of thought back. Um, we applied for the SBA, and um, they, uh, when we first applied, we were told that you would have a year to actually take the funds mm -hmm. and no payment would be required to be paid for a year. And um, a year, 11 months, of the, it, it kept going back and forth so that you, and no, no interest for a year. But when SBA called us, the guy told us that that's incorrect, that once you start taking the funds, the interest starts mm -hmm. and that you will have to make payments and, I'm thinking maybe he said something about you might get a six month leeway. Mm. And, um, but the total amount of money that, uh, that you shared with me that SBA will provide, combined with the amount of total money that you could get from your homeowner's insurance, is that enough to build what you had here? Because uh, I believe you had one home and an Ohana? We had two. Uh, well, two, we had a, two homes and an Ohana and a garage. And a garage. Two homes and Ohana and a garage. Yep. And so to, re to build all that today, You've been quoted somewhere between five and seven hundred dollars a square foot. We were told we were yeah. um, we we were tasked to go out and find contractors to give us pricing, mm -hmm. 
Because, and by the way, they can't get the money if they do it as an owner-builder, right? Right. You have to Not use yep. a GC. So if they, Ed can build anything, but to get this money yep. from the SBA, you have to use a general contractor. Mm -hmm. And the minimum that I've known over the years to build on Maui is, you know, minimum, bare, bare minimum is 500 bucks a square yep. foot. And that's, that's, that's pushing it. That's before the fire. You, that's yeah. before the fire. Anything. Normally it's $700 a square foot. So what's the total amount conservatively? that you think, Ed, it would cost with a general contractor to rebuild what you had here? Well, just the main house, which is only 850 square, 849 square feet or, or somewhere there, that was ranging in the 850,000. Uh, Okay, so 850 grand just for the main just home. The main. Just for the main home. Not Forget about garage, no garage, no, no rentals. Garage. Okay, so let's just work with that number. Let's just take 850 grand. How much money did the insurance company say you'll get for replacement cost? 240. 240. Okay, so that's 240. And then how much money from the SBA? 560. Well, I, yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but it was around five, 500. So 500. So you could end up possibly with $750,000. Between those two sources, that's not enough to rebuild the main home, no. obviously, and then you have to make a payment on the SBA loan, right? And then and you the still, mortgage. and you still, they still have their existing mortgage. So part of the the challenge is that most people are going to want to not default on their loan because they don't want to lose their property, and that's the land grab if they default. You've been making your payments ever since yep. you oh, yeah. got burned down, right? So they're making their payments every single month for a place they can't live in, and then ultimately it's not enough money, but you would have to take some of that money to pay off your loan. I'm not going to ask you how much you owe on your house, but let's just say hypothetically it's 400000 Let's just say hypothetically. Then they would only have $450,000 or, or left, four left to, to rebuild, which is, which is not enough to rebuild half of a house. No. And that doesn't include redoing the septic. Yeah. Right, yeah, talk a little bit about the whole situation here with the infrastructure, the water currently, the electric, the, and the septic. Because I think it's really important for people to know. We're, we're by the way, we're in Waikuli neighborhood. We're at the... Uh, 120A Fleming Road. 120A Fleming Road, right across the street from the Chart House, where Front Street terminates. We're going to talk about that at some point in time as well, but not for now. Um, so talk a little bit about the... Um, what was I saying? The sewer. Yeah, sewer the sewer. Thank you. I started thinking about the chart house. Sorry. They, um, well, they just came and took our water meters. Everybody in Waikoli. So everybody, yeah, they took the water meter. Everybody. Yeah. So here's, here's the, you can see the connections for the water right there. So the water meter's gone. They came and took all of our, theirs are there. Everybody's are gone. They just came and took them. Okay. We don't know why. Maybe they're defaulting now because of the fire. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so that's telling me that our lines are now open to all the debris. Uh -huh. And everything they just sprayed here. Yep, so I'm guessing they can't use the water lines now, which is one of the scenarios that we've heard that they possibly cannot use the water lines. They'll have to put in all new water lines for all of Waiakuli, mm -hmm. Lahaina Luna, and, and uh, Front Street. So, so the amount of time that you're thinking in your head that you'll, that'll be before, so you had all the money you needed, right? Right now, just you had you know 1.5 million bucks, which is probably what it would take to rebuild everything you yes. had, in my opinion. Yep. Um, if you had all that money right now, when do you think, best case scenario, you would have the ability to move in based on what you've heard from the government officials? Is it, well, is it a year? Is it two years? Is it three years? We're getting conflicting heard? stories. Every time we hear one story or, or one estimate, we went to a, a county meeting last night to listen to the governor and, and I'm sorry, the mayor, mayor and, and other people. And they never, they just said it's going to be a long time. We were asking when, a year, two years, three years? So you don't know. They wouldn't no, give they us an know. answer. They, they wouldn't don't. give us an she answer. She just said it'll be a very long time. Right. And then other experts said that they were expecting two to three years because they're also going to have to redo the sewer lines. I think Civil Beat uh, was saying, had an article just recently, last couple of days, that upwards of three years. Upwards of three years, okay. Before they get the water going. And this neighborhood was not on... Uh, sewer it was everybody was on septic or cesspool yeah, right yeah so they they haven't given you the go-ahead that that's what you can do there's some other options or like some well, kind of s a sewer plant on your own property yeah, what, what's heard, all that about we don't know we we just somebody told us yeah. that um, we heard that at the meeting not from the officials but from, from people in the audience that um also live in this area homeowners. they had heard that they can put in and this sounds strange to me but it's a mini sewer plant Mm -hmm. that you put in each property and then and it costs like 
it's a hundred thousand. Eight hundred or eight hundred to a hundred thousand to put what? that in. Was it? No, no it was, it was a, I think it was a hundred. Ninety thousand, wasn't it? Oh, no, ninety, yeah, ninety thousand yeah. to put it in. And, and then a monthly fee. And, and, and then a monthly, monthly fee of twelve hundred. Twelve hundred dollars right. a month. So I think the net net of this whole discussion that you're going to hear is that there's a lot of confusion. Yes. There's yes. a lot of misinformation. The data is changing on a weekly basis. Yeah. How many hours a day are you spending talking to SBA, FEMA, Red Cross, your insurance company? Is it? I've heard it's almost like having a full time job. It, it feels like that. Yes, it, it definitely is. Um, you know, you're either trying to file paperwork to obtain something. You know, if it's not a grant or it's you know SBA or you have to send stuff and then you can't get into your portal. It's just kind of like a like a maze because we're yeah. we're trying to. Uh, um, go through all the the grants and all the different places Which that you can get we money. We haven't found a lot, but it, of those. it's a it's a lot of time. They they require as much paperwork as SBA and FEMA mm -hmm. does. Right, and then you can go through all that only to be like, oh, that's closed. Oh, we don't have any money. Mm -hmm. You know, we ran out of money already. So it, it's there's a lot of that. Yeah. So on a scale from one to ten, how would you rate the financial support that you've received from the government agencies? On a scale from one well, to ten, we, so we we actually haven't gotten anything from the government. Anything? Well, we got seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. We got the yes. seven hundred FEMA. They got their seven hundred bucks. Yeah, that's we, it. We did that's get all. That. And this is—they are not unique. This is not a unique story. They, they don't stand out unless, you know, honestly, I've heard people that were renting, right, that yep. didn't have homeowners insurance. Yeah. They were much more able to tap into the FEMA and the Red Cross yep. resources. But people that owned homes that had insurance. They got stuck with whatever their insurance company was doing, and some insurance companies I've heard are great. Yes, some yeah. are. And yes. other insurance companies are not great. And so in your case, Geico, would you say gets a thumbs up or a thumbs down so far? Well, I, yeah. Thumbs I, down. Thumbs well, down, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, it's just, I mean, this is all about just telling the truth, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, this isn't the experience you would expect that homeowners, hardworking Americans have after one of the most horrific tragedies in the history of our country, yep. right? This is just not one off, some fire in the middle of, you know, somewhere. Yep. This and is I, like at this epicenter of a American tragedy and you'd think they'd be rolling out the red carpet for a hardworking... We've not underinsured. He was a contractor. <laughs> yeah. So he obviously knew. And you were telling me yesterday that there was some kind of price per square foot that you were hearing being quoted and some kind of a table. Yeah, you, oh, if you go online and look up rebuild costs per square foot for um, Hawaii, you get some crazy number of two hundred and nine dollars a square foot. Right. And we're having to go out and talk to the contractors, <laughs> we and, and we're talking to the architects and everything that are going to be doing all this stuff. And that, that's for the driveway, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, well. And I mean, that wouldn't that would that might cover the garage. No, I doubt it. Maybe not. You know, but... So. But are you guys kind of hearing loud and clear what's going on here? And I'm not sure if you're seeing this on the mainstream media or you're hearing the plight of individuals like this, but this story is being repeated over and over and over again. And I haven't even started talking about the people that own businesses on Front Street yeah. that have a replacement yeah. cost that is nowhere near what it would cost to rebuild, let alone the loss of income that they're experiencing down there. And so if you want to talk about choking people out, frustrating them, drawing this whole thing out and giving the banks and the insurance companies an unfair advantage and the government sending all its money over to countries like Ukraine when they could literally just write one check and take care of this, right? Yes, just, they could. Just like that. Yes. Instantaneously, yep. right? Bring its gold card and just, you know. Right. Bring the Ukraine gold card. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's just really sad. So anything else you want to say about the support? Any other insights? Anything else that you want to share before we move on to showing them I What's just, left of your home? I just wish we could get some kind of communication going for everybody. We're, we live in a tight little group here and we're all in contact with each other. We're all trying to pass on information. And I say one thing, the next person heard last night, it was totally opposite. The next guy heard something that was totally opposite from that. None of us, we're yeah. all going to meetings, we're all going to the official sites and we're all getting different perspectives, well, and um, outcomes. Nothing. So, so, so your request would be a organized flow of communication to the homeowners of Lahaina. Yeah. So everyone is on track and knows what's happening. Because yeah. right now it's all over the map right. and it's changing. Don't come and talk to us. 
come and talk with us. Mm. Give us some information. We just want to know. We can't make any plans. Every single time we make a plan, all right, this is what we found out. This is what we, an option that we can take. Let's start pursuing it. Then we find out that's totally wrong. It's not going to happen. This is the way you got to go. So mm. every every other day we're and changing that, our plans because we have no clue. And that goes back to like with the SBA, we, we were told we have a year, which a year is not enough time. But then when we get the phone call, it, that's totally not. So it's like, <laughs> why do we want to even take out a loan that we have to start paying right away when we can't even bill for three or four years? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. Kind of putting the cart before the oh, horse. Yeah. And, oh, and they only give you like $25,000 to start. Oh. And you have to. You have to have, have it built in a year. You have, you have to have it built in a year. Yes, you have to have From all the money we, used. What we understood. What? So it's like we can't even utilize that. So we're really it's confused. It's just BS is what it is. Yeah. It sounds like it's a bunch of BS. Yep. So right. after a it's couple months that we don't, we don't show them contractors bills because we can't build yet, they're going to shut us off. Mm -hmm. That's and then you will have to fear. go through that red tape of filing and appeals and yeah. a constant eight-hour day paperwork. Yeah. So. And it, it's it's. Like it's that for all the people. I, I walk into these customers' houses, working on their houses, and all I see is their entire kitchen turned into an office with dozens and dozens and dozens of papers of all the stuff we That's have to go. That's the organized ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yeah the That's one was mine. very, but everybody's going through it. And, and I say, well, how many hours do you work on paperwork a day? She says, four, five, maybe more. Mm -hmm. She says, and then I wake up in the middle of the night Stressing and Stress, morning. Michelle's up every morning, one, two o'clock in the morning. She just can't figure out what to do, what, how to do it, how to, how to get through something. it. And then you think of something, she gets up, she starts doing paperwork. She's exhausted during the day because we have other stuff we have to do. Like a job? A job. We, yeah. we have to still... You have to, make your mouth, you have to make your house payment here, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're still making their house payment on what we're about to show you right now. So just and, let that sink in for a minute since the day... Because... The 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 because uh, I asked you about deferring your mortgage like oh, oh I've yeah. heard other people get their mortgage deferred for like yeah. a year tell them what the answer was from your mortgage company when it came we, to deferring your payment we called Wells Fargo oh boy and, another and, big name huh? yeah and we asked them you know we went through the fire everything's destroyed how can you help us you offered to help us through COVID for a year and a half two years and we chose to keep making our payments because and extra we always pay and extra. and at, we always pay extra. And so we made it, and we never got behind at all. How, how can you help us with this? They said, this is what we'll do. You have three months that you can skip payments or pay whatever you like. So 90 days. Yep. We will not give you a bad credit report, but on the 90th day, you have to make sure all three payments are paid in full on the 90th day, or we can start filing that day. And Whoa. you had to file paperwork within a certain by a certain cutoff date that you were going to do that. To skip the 90 days yeah. that are then due at the end of 90 days. Yes. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's no help right. at all for anybody. I've even talked to people that have already been served foreclosure papers for not making their payments. So this is actually happening. Like for real. So if you want to talk about a land grab, the banks, the insurance companies, and then the government's lack of response, right? Appropriate response, appropriate funding, yep. a $700 insulting check to people that experienced a fire that makes no sense whatsoever. That didn't cover the clothing that we had to go buy the day after the fire, or it was a week mm -hmm. before we could get to the stores. That didn't cover clothing because we had not, we left with nothing. Right. No clothes, just, just a, a clothing. Yeah. What we could grab. She, she, Our main as, thing as she was, was running out the door, out. She, there was a handful of t uh, clothes there and she took them with mm -hmm. her. So, but is it true that Americans all over our country know this information? They know about the $700 check, right? Everyone knows that, right? Yeah. Pretty much. It was pretty big news at the yeah, time. Yeah. Do you think anybody wrote the White House or called their congressman or reached out to anybody? Do you think there's any civil activation? Are there other are citizens that are doing anything that care? Probably. Is anyone exercising their rights for speech and for communication is there is there a riot is there a is there a I don't mean riot but is there a protest is there is anyone standing up for their neighbor I think we've been um, forgotten here yeah like seriously yeah. my my dad tells me that he doesn't see anything on on uh, the news at all yeah and it hadn't he hasn't heard anything in probably a month and a half but so, didn't they just send 432 million or something like yeah. that to Ukraine a couple of days ago 
They did. A new one, yeah. yeah. Right. So in my humble opinion, this has got to be a grassroots movement. It starts with you watching this video. If you're watching this video, there's a reason why you are watching it and not some other Yahoo that doesn't care. There's a reason you're watching it because you can affect change and you can spread the word and you can help these people because these people represent all the people in Lahaina and what they're going through right now. So please do whatever you can. And obviously we're gonna put your Venmo information. We're gonna show them a really cool piece of art that I think <laughs> is gonna come out of this fire. It's really amazing. And it also tells the tale about the heat of this fire. We're gonna show you trees that didn't burn. We're gonna show you hammocks that didn't burn that are made of cloth right next to uh, an Complete. airstream that completely melted, but the, the, the cloth hammock and the wood table is still perfectly intact. Perfectly intact. Perfectly intact. So just all kinds of mysterious things. We're going to take you on site right now and show you this. And I know this is probably the more interesting part of the video, and that's why we're doing it second, because the first part of this video is to explain to you the conundrum that these poor homeowners in Lahaina are going through. Salt of the earth, hard working, right? No silver spoons here. Ed and Michelle, the hardest working people I know have a mortgage, paying it, still paying it, and getting zero help from their insurance company that they paid for, for 20 years, named <laughs> Geico, pretty well-known company, from a, from a bank that didn't help them at all, Wells Fargo, another pretty well-known company, yep. right? So if you know somebody at Geico, if you know somebody at Wells Fargo, maybe share the video, maybe write the letter uh, to them on behalf of the Cheneys, do something. Do something, man. So anyway, on that note, Let's take them for a quick tour okay. and show them around here. 20, 120 Fleming A. I'm gonna turn the camera this way and I'm gonna show you a few signs just for your informational purposes. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has put up these signs right here. There's the address, got some sign-offs here. Site documentation, hazard tree survey, asbestos survey, HHM assessment. Um, so these have not been signed off on. There's the TMK, there's the address. It is actually unit A, so they got that wrong. Good job. Army Corps of Engineers, thought you guys were smart, you at least know what the address is. Um, over here you have an EPA sign that went up, 2023, properties hazardous waste removal is complete. So they've removed all the hazardous waste. Huh, okay. Ash and other materials remain a health hazard. There's your uh, tiny URL and your hashtag, um, not a hashtag, but a uh, whatever that's called. Soil stabilizer was just applied by the EPA. Looks like on the 2nd of November at 8.30 a.m. And you can kind of see the haze in the driveway right behind my car there. You can kind of see the haze. See how we kind of drove through? So that stabilizer has been applied. And again, they uh, tell us a little bit about that, Ed. Um, you were told that they uh, just, you'd mentioned something about them putting that stabilizer down and how they, the, we, the, the homeowners weren't really notified or there were still people know. on the yeah, property, Yeah, right? we didn't know. Um, um, Wednesday, we went to that meeting the, uh, at the Civic Center, civic center um, from the government, and they were saying that, you know, we notify everybody before we put it down, um, we post everything, we keep people off the property, and people were standing up screaming at that meeting saying, you were spraying that when we were on the property while when they were there the mm -hmm. they came in and sprayed even though people were on their property and it says right on the thing do not be on property for 24 hours had when, we known that they were going to spray we would have come and yeah, we were done a little more looking for cherished items so you, you didn't know? get noticed no nope. notified just, you just, were notified no, no. And we wish we would have known because now you know if we did up for anything we're going to be mm. disturbing the soil so the epa came on your property applied this mm -hmm substance did you sign anything that allowed them nope. to do that nope did you give them permission nope. verbally orally or otherwise nope and they didn't give you notice nope they just we didn't came and did we it. didn't want it it's it, it's not as safe as the well, epa says it is yeah i agree we're not with sure that. There, there's no long-term study and we have animals right and we had a little mini farm here you know we chickens yep yeah. yeah. and and 30, hundreds of plants uh, yeah we gardens had 35 papaya trees that were producing the most fabulous fruit we had six beautiful mango trees that we shared with you know the community and other people that live here and we made a you know we made a little Instagram side gig on the mangoes side, yeah, yeah well yeah. nothing better and than a lot of mango right yeah they were the tastiest mango were the hayden's or uh, we had Hayden and we had, we don't know what one other one, but it was the best. It oh, was, it was like ice cream. Really? Yeah. Now you're making me hungry. I know. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And then we had um, a little mini backyard full of, I was growing all kinds of 
um, pineapple, herbs. I had like 20 pineapple plants growing. I had um, star fruits, uh, coffee, coffee, just about oh. everything you can think of. Mango steam, the, African everything. mango Like steam. a tropical paradise. Yeah, yeah, and I was going, you know, because we would help and supply those to our customers as well because they yeah. love those things. So we have one, the people that are letting yeah. us stay in their home. And so the EPA just came and sprayed a bunch of toxic stuff on your, yep. on your organic well, paradise. It's yep. all gone, but yeah. It's all gone. But yeah, someday you might want to grow yeah, something here again, right? Now yeah. we, you know, we wouldn't feel comfortable doing that unless it's right. all in and our So they, and they, our they didn't give you a, like a list of like, this is the chemicals, this is what's going on, no. sign here if it's okay, opt out if you don't want it. There, that, uh, that option didn't exist. Yep. We I, mean, did. I kind of find that a little surprising, don't you? <laughs> not really. I mean, I'm not surprised because of <laughs> the situation, but I really feel like yeah. it's your land, right? And you own this. I don't You're... think you have an option to but, opt out of that. Really? I, okay. I, I, I don't think I so. I don't know, but I, Interesting. I have not heard that you could opt out. We were, we were saying we didn't want it, and we were, we were hearing that you couldn't opt out. Okay, okay. Yeah. I right. mean, my, my mother and brother's ashes are still here. Unfortunately, I didn't think to grab their urns. And now, you know, yeah. this is not where I imagine their final resting place would be. Right. Yeah. So now it's covered with some kind of goop. Yeah. But, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay. Shall we show them the art? Sure. Shall we show them the art? Okay. So Ed's going to auction this off someday. I don't know when he's going to do it, but we kind of wanted to give you a little preview. This is, uh, tell them what this is, Ed, and tell them about how heavy it is. This is the engine and transmission from one of our cars. <laughs> it almost looks like coral. It does. It was actually laying here behind the... Behind the Mercedes. So you had a Mercedes and you had a BMW. Yep, and that one's from the BMW. And they were both low miles and mint condition, right? Ed? Yep, and that one's from the motorcycle. Got a motorcycle over here. What kind of motorcycle did you have? It was a Honda, Honda Fury. But it was really badass. A badass Honda Fury. <laughs> and so, we rode it maybe six times. <laughs> so you could see this on a wall somewhere right now. Just yes. kind of, yeah, yep. I totally agree. So that's smart. So if they, uh, if they want to contact you about uh, putting in a bid, can I, can I put your phone number in the, in sure. the show notes when sure. we're done? Okay, yep. all right. I think this is an opportunity for someone to have a little piece of history. Maui. Not, not, not the Lahaina. Greatest, yeah, not the greatest piece of history, but uh, something where you turn some beauty from the ashes, right? Yep. That's the whole idea. Well, give us a little tour here of your property and some things that you thought were interesting after the fire, things that got moved, and uh, just anything you want to share about your, your home here. A lot of things that melted, I was a, a, totally surprised. Um, metal rakes completely disintegrated. I mean, solid, uh, they were aluminum, but completely gone. Ladders completely gone, just remnants of it. Um, our sewer system completely burned up. Um, the fire was so hot, it burned down through, through the top of our sewer system and destroyed it, and it was only eight years old. Wow. Brand new. This, this, was all, this is all the leach field and everything, and just burnt. Uh, the fact that this is cracked, it will have to be all replaced. Yeah, because that's the old septic tank, or okay. uh, the cesspool. Bench. cesspool. Yeah. And just, the, you can see the metal just completely. There's a metal roofing for the garage. Yep. When they came through, they moved everything, and all of this was actually in the middle of the driveway. We, we thought that was part of the cleanup. Yeah, that was the cleanup, but they well, left it all cleanup, here. But the removal of, of hazardous waste, right? So yeah. they left all the yeah. all the yeah. bottles They didn't here. take the hazardous waste. They, they left it all here. Right. And then over here, and if here, I remember, we've got an acetylene bottle that was not even on your property. No. Look at this thing. Talk us through that. Sure, whose it is. <laughs> Not sure whose it is, but you can see it obviously exploded. And you think it was acetylene in there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's acetylene tank. Acetylene tank. And this was a brand new trailer you had? Yep. A couple days old. A, you just picked up a refrigerator. Brand new refrigerator and, and freezer, still in the box in the in the trailer. We hadn't even unloaded it yet. And then we got I think we bought it the day before. Wow. And I bought the brand new trailer because I had just bought a brand new excavator. Let's and, go take a look at the excavator. And the excavator burned up. So this is the this main home right here. And this is a washer and dryer you told me you just purchased, just right? Just purchased. General Electric, the General best on the market. Best on the market, about 3K right there. 3K. You mentioned, yeah. Yep. 
Did, was it still under warranty or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was brand new. I'm gonna call him. You're gonna call him. <laughs> and here's your brand new excavator. Hadn't even touched dirt yet. There's what's left of the excavator. There's just some more iron. Yeah, Ooh. sorry. It's all right. And then also you said you had a, a whole bunch of these brand new? Solar panels. Solar panels? Whole stack. And this is a full system you just purchased, right? I, I, I bought the whole entire system, all the, all the inverters and everything. There was, everything was still in the boxes. How many panels? 20, I think it was 28 panels is what I bought. Big ones, not little ones, 450 watt mm. panels. And not, you're just getting ready to install it and then boom. Yeah, I had just redone the, I just got done with the roof, reinforcing and, and putting, got the whole roof all done so that I could put the solar panels up and get the solar in, installed. Mm. All gone, $25,000 just in solar equipment. Wow. And then over here, you've got these brand new, these are brand new cinder blocks? Four pallets of brand new cinder blocks. And some of them are just pulverized, yeah? Yep. So a very hot fire, looks like. Oh, that's right. There was two full pallets of two by four 12s here. I forgot about them. Two by four 12s? Yep, they were here. Yeah. That's what all this remnants is. And then all of the remnants back there mm -hmm. was, I think it was 13 pallets in total of two by, I'm sorry, three by six dug fur. Wow. 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot, and, and 16 foot. And all that lumber was going into the property to rebuild it. Now you told me a story, Ed, when you guys first came to the property the very first time, what's the first thing that you found? We were obviously uh, emotionally drained just looking around. And I looked down in the middle of the dirt, not even in the ash, it was over in the yard where there's just dirt, and I saw a penny. And I'm, I'm one that always picks up a penny. <laughs> so I, th I thought, well, at least we made a penny today. And I went to put it in my pocket and it felt funny. So I ended up looking at it and it said, God bless on a gold medallion, just a little, the size of a penny. Wow. And then within minutes after that, my wife found my mother's cross that I've had for 40 years in my possession after she died. You found that right away? Yep. And then Shortly after that, she found some um, angels, ceramic angels that didn't burn. And then we walked over here and- We gotta show them this, we gotta yep. show them this. And right she, after that, they found- She found the, the manger, or the- The nativity, nativity set. set. And- it's all broken, except, except The only thing that wasn't Jesus. broken, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was everything. It was the- Maybe Jesus was still intact. Yeah. It was the camels, the wise men, it was everything. And she found- Baby Jesus in the manger. That was the first thing she found. Oh, that was awesome. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Wow. In this. We wow. felt like definitely that my mom was here with us. She collected angels. And then you found the cherubim, right? And we found the cherub. And then every time I, we would come, we would find some kind of little angel. She had a bell collection, and we there was a bell with an angel on it. And you found a couple I, of those. I found a couple. Charred. Of little, I mean, uh, you know, I'll try to post them somewhere, but. Um, yeah, so it, I kept saying, okay, mom, just be with me and help me get through this. And she was. Yeah. Well, those she was pretty, a good woman. Those are amazing stories. They really are. And I thank you guys for sharing it. You know, I know it's not easy to have to relive that, you know. It isn't. And it's here every day. Yeah. We lost every, everything every day that we, we owned, worked for, for 50 uh, years. We lost all of our... Things that meant stuff to us. I had all stuff the stuff we can't replace. My mom's, her milk glass collection, you know, stuff like that that meant something because she's no longer here. We lost all the pictures of our families. I had pictures of my grandmother when she was a child, and they're all here. It, all, everything's gone. We, we walked away with nothing. Save the animals. Well, we couldn't save everything. So. <laughs> no. Nope. And you got alive. each other, so there's, yep. you know, that's. There's a lot of silver lining in there, but there's a lot of pain and destruction and things that just can never be replaced. Even if you're made whole financially, which I think you should be, you still well, have things that can hope... never, money Money can't buy those things. No. And, and right now you say that your ashes for your mother and your brother are still somewhere in this. Yep. Wow. Covered up with red goop. Yeah. 
know that the hard part too was when we first came back on the property is the fact that other people had been here and I understand they have to look for the people that have deceased and, and all that but it's it was like they it was like it was rummaged through it just felt like every had they not stepped on these things maybe mm -hmm. I could have salvaged more you know and stepping on my mom's where I knew her ashes most likely would be it was very hard that's crazy you know um, and were you contacted ahead of time saying, hey, we want to enter your property, we, nope. do we, we need permission? No. Nope. So you were trespassed upon, yep. essentially, under some kind of a yep. proclamation or something. Okay. But you, they didn't bother to contact you to say, may we do this? No. Nope. Or can you, you want to come with us? And So when's the first time you were legally allowed access to stand right here, legally? I think it was on the October 9th. October 9th. The fire was on the 8th of August. So, and a lot of people had trampled through here. So, so 60 days. Yeah. You were given legal access to your property yeah. 60 days afterwards. We kept trying, but they kept saying, no, you can't come in. We kept How stopping. How many times it. did you try? Several times we, we stopped. Trouble yeah. yeah. <laughs> Several times we stopped at the barricade because I kept hearing that people got on their property. Like, so I'd, I'd stop and say, I'd like to, you know, here's my license. You know, can I go on there? And they'd say no. And I'm like, other people did. Why can't I? I've and heard people were given special access if they had friends in the government or police officers. I mean, that's what I heard. Could be. Yeah. I don't know. Shall we take a trip sure. over to the corner and we're going to show yep. you some interesting things that didn't burn. As you can see, everything pretty much melted. This was parts of uh, yeah. my mom's the golf cart. My mom's milk glass collection and my grandmother's. So it was very special, you know? Mm -hmm. What is that behind you, that, that color, that gray? Uh... That is fireproof mortar. I build um, uh, pizza ovens, and you have to build it out of fireproof mortar. Um, and that was some of that I had left from um, this was like a little... the, the one I did down on, on Mahina Hina uh, Road. So, so that, that was formed? Well, no, that was bags of it. Bags of it, I got you, yep. I got you, okay, okay, that makes sense. And... Golf cart, okay. Barbecue. Here, here's Brand our. This Brand is our. No more. This is the smoker. The smoker. And smoker then we had smoked. potted plants everywhere. These were from our wedding. Um, our wonderful friend Stan and Judy uh, bought these giant pots and put these arecas around at our wedding. And then they moved to the mainland, and so we brought them here. And they they were quite expensive actually, and to move them here cost us mm. about five hundred dollars yeah. just to get them here. Wow. So we, we was hoping the pots would survive because they're mm -hmm. kind of blue. One thing about this property, next door is Jeremy. If you guys remember, we did a video with Jeremy. And I was told by Jeremy that this land used to be owned by the fire chief of Lahaina a long time ago. And one of the things that's, that, that stands out about this property when you drive down the street, and that, that street right there is... Um, Fleming. Fleming Road, okay. Uh, is that it's got this huge rock wall. And one of the reasons you put up a rock wall is for stop fires. To stop fires, right? Help, help stop, well, yeah. And, and, and safety. Yeah, but and you, we just, had, we you just, just completed put, yours, right? Yeah, we yeah. just completed it. And how much it. did you just spend on that thing? Oh, oh. We don't even want to say. It was like over forty grand. Forty thousand dollars for be, your rock I don't wall. Remember. And so the rock wall didn't. Kept changing. That's one of those things the price keeps changing as you go along. Right, it goes up, right? Yeah, we were quoted <laughs> one price. Doesn't go down. And we started, and then it went up, and it went up again, yeah. and then we had to change contractors, and it went up mm -hmm. again. But a pretty significant rock wall, I oh, would yeah. say. Yeah. I yep. mean, you would think that would afford you some protection. Yep. You would think. Nope. This is a generator, and you said all your Honda generators completely disintegrated, right? Yep. But this one is the uh, yep, shout out to uh, what Costco, right? It survived a little bit. Yeah, there's. it's actually the remnants are right here somewhere for, for the other one I had. The Honda? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then there was another Honda over there in, in the garage. Are these are these plastic water bottles? They yes, were, we, had, had some... we had several water bottles to for drinking water. We had, we had um, irrigation water stacked up, so in case... This was actually a covered area, so they were yep. underneath. Okay, and this is where you had some of your supplies, right? You were kind of future potential uh, uh, catastrophes like stored up food and like I know a, you're a big carnivore like I am and yep. you had some had some deer meat and some oh, some freezer full. freezers full right yeah. five just freezers full of deer meat <laughs> well not just deer we had beef well a lot of steak but yeah. mostly deer meat we we're so, so how's, how's the carnivore diet been lately 
Uh, terrible <laughs> since the fire. <laughs> terrible. We had pizza last night. <laughs> we had a hard time getting the meat we needed yep. and keeping stocked up because we didn't have any freezers. Um, so you got to kind of buy it as you need yeah. it and it's hard to get. And a lot of canned goods you can see you guys had, but how many years supply would you say you had? Oh, well over two years. Well over two years. Oh, yeah. way over. We didn't want everyone to know that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well you're, you're good we people. We didn't want everyone to know we were preppers. You're good people to know in case of an emergency, yeah. unless, right. of course, yeah. yeah. Well, all the prepping you can do will not prep you for a fire. Correct. Because you cannot take it with you. Yeah. No, nope, and fire is instantaneous. Yeah. Now that we have found out. Yeah. So Let's now keep... we keep like a little box by the garage door. A grab-to-go box mm, of stuff. Yeah. Just to, if, you know, if it happens again, we grab that, we put it in the car. It's ready yeah, to go. Very smart. It's not this amount, though. <laughs> <laughs> this was a really cool turtle, a metal turtle oh, wow. on the outside wall. Ooh, yeah, you can so still cool. see some yeah. of the color, though. You can see his legs. Yeah. Well, you could. <laughs> yeah. And then we have a, a large gecko over there, same, I think same I kind. Oh, did you? And then this is. But that's how hard. That's these are concrete blocks, completely incinerated. That's amazing. How hot does the fire have to get to burn concrete? Concrete blocks. Concrete block. Just crumbly. Wow. That's unbelievable. And this is more uh, washers and dryers. Because you, you you kept a stock of things, right? You had like ceiling fans and things for oh. your customers. Oh, are... Dozens of yeah. everything I used on a daily basis, I would stock up. Yeah, dozens, dozens. Because well, it it <laughs> to get anything, I would. So you call me to your house to fix a ceiling fan. I would have to go to your house, see what I need, drive all the way to the other side of the island, buy it, come back. That's three hours on the road. Mm you're not paying me for that time on the road. I only get paid for installation. Right. So I would lose so much money and time that I would stock Driving up on everything. Yeah. If I needed a screw, I would buy a couple boxes of them. If I needed a hammer, I'd buy two. If I needed a ceiling fan, I'd buy two or three. He's not mm -hmm. exaggerating. Yeah, air conditioners. And I know you installed an air conditioner. I had 20 for, air conditioners. For one of my clients, yep. you just had it in your on, van. On stock. Yeah. They're, they're here in, the, in this yeah. pile, brand new in the box. So this wasn't just your home, this was your business. Yes. Yeah. Like I commercial. lost my whole entire business and most of my work burn up. Yeah. Most of my customers were at Wyakuli. And Front Street. And Front Street. Yeah. Right. A lot of customers on Front Street. Yep. This was our mini trampoline that we didn't get to use very often. Yeah, Ed, by the way, is the guy in my, uh, my marketing. Uh, whenever I'd list a new home or sell a home, he would always come and service it and uh, I'd give uh, I give away a couple hours complimentary of Ed, um, and he was really helpful in helping me and getting all those listings perfected. So he's definitely one of the top handymen on the island. Matter of fact, I hate to say this, Ed, but I never gave out your number because I didn't want... <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> I already knew you had a million customers, so I'm like, well, I'm keeping this one to myself. A lot of people won't give my number out. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get Ed's number, you know, you're wise to not share it because you want to keep good services like that flowing. So. Obviously now, Ed, uh, from a percentage standpoint, before the, before the, uh, the fire, 100% business, what percentage just roughly would you say you're at now? I think I lost 60%. 60%? Maybe more, I, I'm not sure. We never did the number. We're too busy trying to live right now to, right. to do a lot of but stuff. But more than but... half of your clients are oh, yeah. basically yeah. out of commission, yeah. yeah. So support Ed any way you can. Obviously we're putting the, their Venmo in the description and also later on we'll put up their GoFundMe. And here I'm, I'm right now, I'm at the corner of their property. And here I want to show you a couple of things that are pretty interesting. This is Jeremy's house. We did a video with Jeremy and his family, if you remember them. And um, their house, obviously, a complete loss. They have a, a Gulf Airstream back here somewhere, right, Ed? Yeah. That completely burned. We're kind of peekabooing over his fence, but there's a Gulf, that's where his Gulf Airstream was. But here's what I kind of find a little bit interesting is over here, you've got this, cloth, what, cotton? Cotton. Cotton hammock, right, with holes in it. It's perfectly fine. And then next to that, you have a swing. outdoor swing that's being hung by this nylon strap, would you say? Yep. Nylon strap is, is looking good. Um, and then there's another kind of ratty tatty, maybe chair or something. That doesn't look like it burned either. And uh, all these trees are intact. But you want to know what's really interesting? Look at this tree. Now, this tree didn't burn. What's going on on the inside of the tree? You can clearly see it was burning from the inside, right? Is that, 
Is that pretty obvious right there? Yeah. I mean, the tree is not burned, right? There's still, there's literally still fruit hanging from the tree or burned up, whatever. Not, it's not fruit. Tree. What is it? Noni, noni tree. It's a noni tree, but it is burned on the inside. So what causes, in the comments section, what causes a tree to burn from the inside? And then you've got this nice, uh, not nice, but you know, you've got a saw horse, that you call it, Ed? Yep. Saw horse with some two by fours or two by sixes. Made out of wood. Made out of wood and some, what are those, uh, four by fours or? Plastic. I think, it, or what? let me see. I think those are all wood. Oh, it's a four by four wood. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that's all, hasn't, that's all good, right? But yet on both sides of this, you have a house that completely melted and cinder blocks that are melted. And, uh, and you have cotton. And Jeremy mentioned this in his video that we did right after the fire, but things that didn't burn that you would think with the level of heat, you know, would have burned. Because one of the interesting things is whenever I show something that burn that doesn't make sense like a car that melts everyone just goes oh it was an ember an ember an ember okay let's just throw a bunch of embers on a car and see if it catches fire but there had to be enough embers flying around you would think to incinerate the tree and the cotton and all these things if there's embers that can melt cars everywhere yep you would think it would melt that as well so in the comments let me know what you guys think because i think it's i think there's something fishy something fishy's going on in lahaina what do you think ed is something fishy going on around here yes yeah no question, right? Our chicken coop. It went from here all the way to the other side to the tree. And of course, you're world famous for saving your chicken because <laughs> you you uh, live with them in your van for how many nights? Five days, I think it was. Five days and nights, you live with yep. thirty chickens. Yeah. Wow. And they still produced a few eggs. <laughs> yeah. So did you cook them up in the morning and your we van? We didn't have anything to cook them with. Nothing to cook them on, right? So just raw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Calcium and all. <laughs> yeah. I have friends of mine that do that. They eat oh, the yeah. chicken and the shells. Yeah. That's wild, huh? Now we have a chicken hunt. We have to find them every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't, have a, you don't have them in a coop, oh. obviously. No, yeah. not yet. Yeah. You have to go on a chicken, like an egg hunt. Yeah. Every day. They're loving it, though. Yeah. So just to give you guys a little perspective of where we're at, right across the street, we have Lahaina Roads. And then some of the burned out homes. And then directly across, you'll see this if you come to Lahaina, you'll see this metal structure. And right across from there is the end of Front Street and the Chart House and where the infamous roadblock and all the choke point happened right there. Um, have you, do you know, Ed, if anything has come out of that whole conversation? Over, I mean, I've, I haven't no, heard much. Is it, I haven't it, heard any comments out of it. No mm -hmm. details, uh, n names, who, who told the policeman to blockade us into a burning street. Mm -hmm. We've heard nothing. Just and by the crickets. way, just so you guys know, I, and I think more people should do this, is you can submit a request for information with any government agency uh, for under the Freedom of Information Act. And I have requested the radio transmissions between the police officers and the command officer at the time and dispatch for this area. And I, re I, re I sent that in and I requested it and, and I got a response. And what do you think the response is? <laughs> they, they, they checked every box of why they are potentially exempt from having to share that information. Yeah. Wow. But I guess the more people that we get asking for information like that, then the stronger case that could be made for them violating their requirement to disclose that information. Because it's not just Freedom of Information Act, which is under the federal agencies, but there's a UIAP, which is for state agencies. So I encourage everybody to just Google Hawaii uh, Freedom of Information Act. You'll see a, a brochure that's a PDF. And at the very beginning of that, it says it is the basically the responsibility of individuals to hold the government accountable and that's why we need access to this information and the whole democracy hinges on the fact that the citizens have access to that information like our government our way of life our very democracy depends on them giving us this type of information to hold accountable to find out what happened um, but if they don't do it, or if they come up with excuses, or if they charge $25,000 to do it, then that's obviously, this can take place. But uh, yes. share that information and uh, become activated to the best of your ability to help people like Ed and Michelle. Because if you don't, guess what? You're next. Yep. You're next. Or someone in your family is next. Or another fellow citizen is next. Someone's next. But this doesn't stop with Lahaina. Yep. They're hoping you're just going to forget. But well, I we, think they're hoping we'll move. Oh yeah, they hope you move. Yeah. 
So w if you were to just uh, give us a sketch of what's your, what's your goal? What do you want to do? Do you want to stay in we, Lahaina? We want to stay, You yes. want to stay? Yes. Okay. Do you think you'll be able to stay? We are hoping we can stay. Yeah. We're not 100%. It changes daily. We don't know. We're not 100% sure. I mean, just the sewer alone could force us out of here. Yeah, 100,000. Because you can't, you, you can't even, mm -hmm. the sewer has to be done first, yeah. mm -hmm. I believe, before you can do any building. So if, if we have to dish out hundreds of thousands of dollars just for sewer and who knows for water and everything else, that may break a lot of people right there. Yeah. And I know one request that you had, Ed, is that if there's anybody out there that's a general contractor in Hawaii, right? yes. that you would be willing to help people like Ed and his neighbors that really need a general contractor to help them build because that's the only way they can get the money from the SBA, yep. but they're willing to do a lot of the work yourself. You yeah. just need a GC to sort of be on the paperwork, yep. but guys like you that are handy, that know how to swing a hammer, like Jeremy next door, yep. you would like to kind of hooey up together in here. Yeah, our little group. Make a little group, can we all, call it in Hawaiian. We can all get it done, and all of us have contractor experience. Mm -hmm. But you just need a GC to come in and kind of sponsor you. Yeah. And they would get paid something for their efforts, whatever we'll, it might be. Well, yeah, can't afford everything, but I mean, we'll come up with what we can collectively, and, and we'll do, hopefully we can do all the work. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, before we sign off, Ed, Michelle, is there anything else? Final thoughts, final words, anything else you want to share that you haven't shared yet? Uh, well, we're grateful to be alive yeah. during this, and we're grateful that we were able to save, you know, our animals. Um, and we feel for the people that are going through this and um, the ones that have lost their loved ones. And we need lots of prayers. It's very emotional still, even though it's been two months. You know, it's hard to drive past the property. It's hard to be here. Once you come here and then you leave, you're emotional for days. And um, it's take, it takes a toll on the relationship, you yeah. know, as well. So we're not the only ones going through this. Mm. You know? And your relationship as a couple. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's stressful. I mean, it's we haven't going... killed each other yet. But... <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, they say, like, if you build a house with your spouse, you know, you only do it once because of, of the stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could multiply that by... Yep. A thousand right. or something and, like this. Yep. And then the fact that we're losing our little Rosie, our, mm. our dog, um, has multiplied, you know, that. And then Jesse has has okay. mammary cancer. So we're, tr you know, that's a lot of stress of just trying to deal with that alone with trying to deal with this and, you know, trying to help her as much as we can. We're trying yeah. to do some, you know, uh, homeopathic. Do some treatments. Yep. Treatments. And, yeah. some and that's expensive too, so. Yeah, the bills don't stop, do no, they? they don't. No, they don't. They just keep flowing in. Mm -hmm. And so imagine a whole community that's been stripped of all their belongings, of their dwelling, of their livelihood, and now being left behind by a government that's not doing anything really substantial. Yeah. If anything, creating more time, more energy, more effort, taxing you, and just feels like you're going in circles. Yep. So if that bothers you, do something about it. Watch, share the video, like the video. Um, subscribe to the channel. People are being on. How many times have you been unsubscribed from my channel? Ed? I have been unsubscribed five days in a row from his channel. <laughs> every day I go in, I click on it, I have to resubscribe every time. Yeah. So there's something going on. I don't know what that is. I mean, we know what it is, but yeah, we know. We got to fight it, and it just doesn't cost you anything to click a button, subscribe, share. Thumbs up. Put it on your Facebook, put it on your Instagram, mm -hmm. put it on your TikTok. You can cut up this video any way you want for some of you. Hustle bitches and people out there. I know it sounds weird, but there's some good well, YouTubers, some good YouTubers out yeah. there that are taking this content and spreading it out to the world. Anonymous, thank you for reposting my video a couple of days ago. I mean, there's like a tribe of people that care. Um, we have uh, our group is getting bigger. Yeah, it's growing. Mm -hmm. We're we, going to be the majority. So, well, we are the majority, right. but we're going to be. There's a lot of silent ones. Yes, yeah, right. silent majority. We got the brush. Is it brush junkie? She's out there doing yep. stuff. We have. Uh, um, what's the one over on Big Island? Um, Enlightened Mind or whatever. I can't remember the name of it. But she's doing some amazing work. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Um, and there's a few others. But I just want to say thank you so much to everybody for your support, for the community, for people like this, and just to keep pushing forward. And so if you are an influencer, if you are someone that just has an iPhone, right? You can take videos, you can post them, you can publish yourself. You don't need to wait for me to do it. But certainly if you are, an influencer. Keep your focus on this. These people need help. 
We need to start holding our government accountable and we need to start being activists for Lahaina. And if you're not an activist, become one. And if you're out there in tourist land and you're thinking about coming to Maui, do it because 80% of our economy depends on tourism and we need you to come. So when you come here, you can find people like Ed and Michelle. They're everywhere and you can just love on them, give them some money, make a video with them, just make it part of your life and come back and visit here because we need your tourism dollars. That's very, very important. That can't be understated. You can't just watch this from afar. It's still Maui, it's still beautiful, right? Except for this area, obviously, but the rest of the island is here waiting for you. And then you can also integrate some community service towards your fellow human in your vacation. And I think that's the best of both worlds right there. So thank you guys, I appreciate it. Much aloha. Thank you. Thank you and, for what uh, you do. You bet, my pleasure. Venmo link will be in the description and I'll tag it as a comment. Um, also your GoFundMe. And then if anyone's interested in the piece of art that Ed's gonna auction <laughs> off, I'm gonna put his cell phone number. And anything you wanna communicate with these guys, his cell phone number will be in there. They're amazing folks, help them any way you can. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart to yours. Much aloha. Lahaina forever, Lahaina strong. Lahaina strong. And it's gonna, it's all gonna work out, I do believe. And we just seal this video in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 All right, guys, till next time. Eric West out. <laughs>